Welcome back. You're still watching World Inside. I'm Tian Wei. A grim milestone in the COVID-19 pandemic. The number of infections worldwide has now reached 10 million, while the number of people who died from the disease is more than a half a million. The United States, Brazil, Russia are the hardest hit countries in terms of confirmed cases. Their infections combined amounting for almost half of the world's total. With still no cure or vaccines in sight, where is the global community headed and how will it change our way of life for good? <laughs> And in Beijing, we are joined by Professor Liu Yuanli, the Dean of the School of Public Health at Peking Union Medical College. Professor Liu, welcome to the program. Always on the alert, is that going to be the new normal? What does that mean for all of us? On one hand, uh, we should not um, you know, uh, uh, relax our alertness. And I think one of the positive consequences of this uh, COVID-19 pandemic is that uh, much enhanced the public awareness uh, of the infectious uh, diseases uh, and uh, also very good uh, uh, habit, uh, public health habits such as uh, uh, washing hands and uh, wearing masks in uh, uh, public places and all those uh, good habits uh, should not be relaxed. But on the other hand, uh, we also should uh, you know, gain some confidence as we know uh, better and better how to deal with the disease both in terms of uh, rapid testing and diagnostics, mm -hmm. as well as uh, treatment and support. Uh, talking about the long term, uh, some suggest coronavirus, uh, such as that uh, coronavirus that has been leading to this outbreak, uh, is likely to be with us for a long time to come. So once again, what does that mean to all of us? Lifestyle change, for sure, and probably for good? Well, uh, you know, uh, my prediction is anybody's guess. Uh, nobody knows how long this uh, uh, COVID-19 will be with us. According to different uh, simulation models, this pandemic uh, or the epidemic waves of uh, COVID-19 seem to migrate uh, uh, seasonally from uh, northern hemisphere to southern hemisphere and the back. And many uh, scientists worry that in the coming fall, uh, starting in September, uh, this uh, COVID-19 pandemic uh, might coincide with uh, seasonal uh, uh, influenza. And uh, we don't know whether uh, that interaction uh, will happen and uh, uh, whether the interaction of the two uh, you know, epidemics would have uh, more uh, serious consequences. Right. So, uh, you know, as we are uh, fighting this uh, new virus, uh, we are also uh, on the alert on the uh, uh, emerging new challenges uh, of existing, uh, you know, infectious diseases such as uh, seasonal flu, uh, as well as uh, 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 novel uh, infectious diseases. Mm. Things are getting ever co more complicated, a lot of unknown. Having said that though, Professor Liu, I do want to ask you about some of the tools we have in mind, for example, vaccine. Now, we do not have any of the vaccine candidates in the world that has been confirmed through a 12-3, uh, which could last for half a year or even a year time. But we do know now over the past week, uh, Chinese side, the Chinese military side, has announced there's something called Ad-5 new coronavirus vaccine candidate that is jointly developed by Ken Sino and also the Beijing Institute of Biotechnology from Academy of Military Medical Sciences here in China. How much do you know about this and what does that mean one year trial in the military to the soldiers in China? What would that bring to us about the functionality and efficacy of this vaccine? Well, it goes on with saying, uh, without saying that uh, uh, many scientists, uh, many laboratories, uh, including the one you just mentioned uh, in our military academy, uh, but I have to mention that there are other Chinese labs uh, alongside with other uh, international scientists and laboratories have been working day and night 
you know, uh, to uh, trying to make headway so with the R&D of uh, vaccinations, which is the ultimate uh, a weapon we can have uh, to fight this new world war. Uh, however, uh, on one hand, we are excited by the latest development uh, on the uh, China side uh, with uh, uh, the <clears throat> vaccination trial going to the uh, third and uh, uh, hopefully the final phase. And, uh, and on the other hand, and also uh, publicly, President Xi Jinping announced that uh, we will make uh, the proven uh, eff uh, efficacious uh, immunization a global public good. Mm. And uh, so I think uh, in a world full of uncertainties, anxieties, this is certainly uh, infuses a certain sense of hope. But on the other hand, uh, we should be very calm and uh, we should not let the inflated hope uh, to overtake us because we, we, we don't know uh, even proven uh, uh, effect, uh, effective in short term. Uh, we, we have no way to know whether you will gain uh, you know, a, a sustained uh, immunity by uh, injecting the vaccination. And, uh, and we also don't know when the new vaccination hits the market, whether the mutation of the virus uh, already is uh, far uh, enough uh, to uh, make uh, the new vaccination ineffective. Mm -hmm. So there are still uncertainties. Mm -hmm. Professor Liu, let's talk about the global situation. Which stage are we in now, even for the first round of this coronavirus, uh, COVID-19? The situation in the world right now doesn't give us a uh, you know, very clear sense of hope that this uh, pandemic will end anytime soon. And we all know that the, com uh, the number of confirmed cases uh, and the reported cases is just tip of the iceberg. So in the future, uh, it sounds like we are not talking about uh, a clear, uh, uh, you know, uh, to, uh, to quote uh, Churchill, uh, this probably is not the beginning of the end or end of the beginning. Mm -hmm. It's probably a combination uh, of a many ways. Finally, my question, uh, Professor Liu, you already partly answered it already, but I still want a clear answer. Can China be this oasis, even though the COVID-19 number now in China confirmed extremely low? Will China be able to, on its own, in a way, survived well while the rest of the world is turbulent? No. Uh, the short answer is no. And uh, this is an interconnected world. No country, how successful, no matter how successful uh, you have been so far, uh, is not immune from uh, uh, imported uh, cases or uh, infections. And so we have to, the, the, world, the one world you know, and uh, one uh, fighting from. Right. And uh, we, we, we have to be in this together, uh, uh, whether you like it or not, you know. Professor Liu Yuanli, the Dean of the School of Public Health at Peking Union Medical College, thank you so much, sir, and thank you for your work.